current vulnerabilities and challenges, I always talk about the continuum. I think our role as security leaders, and, and some of you I'm sure will uh, relate to this, is to keep people, particularly our executives, but everyone in our organizations, at, in the middle of the continuum. On the one end is complacency. People don't think about their own protection or safety. They don't care. They don't want anything to do with it. And on the other end is overreaction. And those of us who have had significant things happen in our institutions, we know that overreaction. And that can be very difficult to um, diminish, can de-escalate. So by empowering people and educating people, you get them at the right place of that uh, in the, on that continuum where people are feeling um, empowered, they're thinking about their own safety and security and that of others, uh, but they're not obsessing about it. We deal with foreseeable versus unforeseeable events. Most, most risks in healthcare, and I think in many other places too, tend to be foreseeable. They certainly are in healthcare. We know that we're going to get people that are from undesirable um, situations, maybe uh, more higher risk situations. They may be psychotic, they may be gang members, they may be um, people who have criminal backgrounds, they may be people that simply are not in control of their own emotions, whatever it is. We have children we have to protect and babies we have to protect, but we all also see unforeseeable events on occasion. And those are the events that can really uh, create incredible fear. Uh, we see a lot of contraband brought in, being brought into our facilities, whether that be uh, drugs or uh, drug paraphernalia or weapons. We have uh, huge issues, as many of us do now in every industry, with the potential of cybercrime um, and what happens if we lose uh, our information systems, if we lose our ability to run our systems in a healthcare situation. And we've done some pretty intense uh, preparedness exercises. That means people's lives are on the line because you can't treat them properly or machines may um, reprogram to a point that they uh, kill people. So this is very serious. Can be uh, higher amounts. We know there's higher homeless population since the pandemic and even over the past uh, few years. We know there's a lot of um, behavioral health patients and more uh, issues with people and, and their own mental health. Particularly during the pandemic, people have not been able to get the psychiatric resources they need. There's not enough psychiatric hospitals in this country. There's not enough uh, therapists for what people are looking for. Um, and there's not enough programs. And um, many of our hospitals, most I would say around the country and even beyond outside the U.S. are dealing with uh, ridiculous numbers of uh, behavioral health patients that need support, that need help, that simply can't get it or can't get it very quickly. So they're often staying in our emergency departments for not only hours or days, but sometimes weeks or months without a place to be able to be moved to, which is very difficult. Imagine yourself a rational person who would be stuck on a bay in an emergency department for days. Um, the good news is staff is starting, uh, healthcare staff tend to be very um, resilient folks. They're tough. And they, they, years ago, I used to really have to contend with people who didn't always report when they were hit or when they were threatened or when they were pinched or when they were um, sexually assaulted or when they were called a name. Nowadays, people understand there has to be a lower threshold for all of that. So the reporting has gotten better. The opioid crisis has created problems for all of us. And I know that's true for you in whatever industry you're in. The anti-police sentiment and the work that's been going on for police reform and um, a lot of very vocal groups against police work. Um, I have a licensed police department at Mass General and in some of our other hospitals as well. Um, not entirely, but partially um, can create a difficult situation um, for those of us who are trying to do the job of protecting a large environment and difficult environment. Um, there's, again, so much hate that has been emerging in, for different groups. First, um, I think there was a lot of anti-Muslim um, anti hate during 9-11. There was a lot of anti-immigration hate during the years that uh, President Trump was running. Then there was a lot of Asian hate after the pandemic broke. Um, there's a lot of racial hate, sexist, uh, sexist hate, uh, uh, homophobic, all of that that really comes through loud and clear in healthcare settings and, and really creates major problems on the side of healthcare workers 
of all types being, um, uh, you know, assaulted with that hate, even if it's just hate speech. And sometimes patients. We had a a patient in a, a a Muslim woman in a hijab, a pregnant woman who was punched and and had um, some cultural epithets thrown at her um, for, of course, absolutely no reason.